Okay, this video is going to talk about how to further break down some variances. So in the previous chapter we learned that in order to compare apples to apples, we needed to adjust our budget for the actual activity level. So if we had 32 customers and our budget only said we had 30, we need to adjust those budget numbers up to 32. We'll call that our flexible budget, then we'll be able to compare it to actuals. That'll be our spending variances. Now we're going to take those same variances, the spending variances, and we're going to break those further down to make them even more helpful or useful to our managers. We're going to break them into what was a result of materials price and what was the result of materials quantity. We're going to do the same thing for direct labor and for variable overhead. We're going to break it into price and quantity. So here's what we're going to do. Um, there's a previous video available that I've done that will tell us how to derive these formulas and, and therefore easier ways to memorize them. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and start to use those formulas. So I've typed the formulas right here for us. So the first one that we're going to do is materials price variance. And to calculate that, we're going to have actual quantity times actual price minus standard price. So you can see in parentheses that we are getting the difference in the price and multiplying it by actual quantity. That's going to give us our materials price variance. So um, there's one little trick when you're working on the materials variance that this problem brings out. And so I'm going to flip right over here and show you what it is. On the materials variance, and only on the materials variance, there is an important subtlety that we've got to look at. We're working on the price variance right now, and it tells us that we need to compute it on the entire quantity purchase. When we get to the next one where we're doing quantity variance, we just need to use the quantity used. So some of your homework problems purchased and used were the same, so you didn't have to worry about this. But this problem brings out the fact that if purchased and used are different, then um, when you're doing the price variance, you need to do it on the amount purchased. So let's go back and do that. The amount purchased then is going to be $46,700. So we're going to have $46,700 and then we're going to multiply that by the difference in our actual price and our standard price. So our actual price is $5.70. And our standard price is six dollars, so we'll just say five seventy minus six dollars. And when we do that, we get fourteen oh one zero is our price variance. Now, to figure out if that's favorable or unfavorable, just look back and see which one was um, a better price. So. Um, our actual price was $5.70 and our standard price is $6, so this one's actually a favorable variance. Okay, next we're going to look at the materials quantity variance. So in parentheses we'll have the quantities, actual quantity minus standard quantity, and we're going to multiply that by standard price. So our standard price is still going to be our $6, so we'll say 6 times and then our actual quantity is going to be um, given to us materials actually. This time we're going to use the used because of that slide that we looked at a minute ago, 43,130. And then in order to get this next number, we are going to need to look up here and find out that our direct material standard is 5.2 kilos per unit. Well, we need to take that 5.2 and do it times our number of units. So 5.2 times 8,100 is going to give us 42,120. So you multiply and you get 42,120. And that is going to give you 6060. And again, we're going to look at the quantity versus the standard quantity. And we're going to see that it is unfavorable because... Um, our raw material is used was 43,130, and the standard at the actual output is going to be um, 42,120, which is less. So remember, when you go to that standard quantity, you're going to be looking at your standard quantity at the actual output. 
and it may help you if I actually show you that slide to show you what I'm talking about there. Okay, here's that slide that we looked at. Uh, when you get down to standard quantity, which is the one that we were just now using where we had to multiply by that 8100, the reason that we had to do that is because the standard qu quantity is the standard quantity allowed for the actual output. The actual output was $8,100. So that's why we multiply to get to our standard quantity. Okay, now we're going to look at computing the direct labor rate variance. And what we're going to do for this one is we're going to be looking at actual hours, and actual hours are 2570. And then we're going to multiply that by our actual rate minus our standard rate, so 2370 minus $22. And when we do that, we get to 4369, and this one is going to be unfavorable, and that is because $23.70 that we paid was more than our standard that we allowed, which was $22, so that's going to be unfavorable. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to look at our labor efficiency variance. So for this one, we're going to have our standard rate which is $22, that's our standard rate up here. And then we're going to multiply that by our actual hours, which are going to be the 2570 that we already know about. And then we need to go ahead and get our standard hours. So in order to do that, we need to look at our standard quantity times 8100 actual units. So when we do that, we get 2430. And so we get a variance of 3080. And in this case, it's unfavorable. I can type, which I might not be able to. Um, and it's unfavorable. That still has a typo in it, doesn't it? Let me fix that. because our actual was higher than our standard. All right, next we're gonna look at the variable overhead rate variance. Okay, when we were working on our labor efficiency variance, I had highlighted the standard price of direct labor and the actual price of direct labor. But now that we're working on our variable overhead, I'm gonna still be looking at these direct labor hours, both as actual and as the standard at the actual output. So I'll still be concerned about 2430 and 2570, that's because my factory overhead rate is based on direct labor hours. So I'm still going to use that, but I'm going to use a new price. I'm going to use my variable overhead price. So I'll be concerned not about the 22 here, but about the $2, because that's my variable overhead price. And down here, my actual variable overhead is $1.80. So again, I'm still concerned about direct labor hours here because my factory overhead predetermined overhead rate is based on direct labor hours but I'll have my new variable um, cost per hour. So down here, I'm going to come to um, actual hours. So actual hours are going to be 2570, just like they were before. But now because I'm looking at my price variance, I'm going to be looking at the difference between $1.80 and $2. All right, and when I do that, I get $5.14, and this is going to be favorable because $1.80 is favorable to $2. And then lastly, I'm going to be looking at my variable overhead efficiency. So if I look for my standard rate, that was my $2 times my actual hours, which is $25.70 minus my standard hours, which is the amount per hour at the actual output. So that is still your 2430 times your, um, or your 0.3 times 8100, which gives you 2430. All right, and that gives me 280, and um, because 2570 is more hours than what I had standard planned, which was 2430, this is going to be unfavorable. Oh, 
And that is how you work that problem. And again, if you need help with the formulas, um, there's another video that I'll make available to you for that. Let me know if you have any questions.